Whiskey Acres Distilling was co-founded by myself, my father, and uh, a third partner by the name of Nick Nagley. And today we have a, uh, a small ownership percentage also belongs to our master distiller, Rob Wallace. So all together there's four of us involved in the business. Uh, Whiskey Acres was kind of my brainchild back in the uh, mid-2000s. We were coming off of a strong agriculture period and we were looking for ways to diversify. Uh, quite honestly, we're located 60 miles west of Chicago in kind of a development corridor and we did not own a lot of property. So a lot of our land that we rented was being developed either for housing or warehouses and we had a, uh, a little bit of a threat there. And so we were looking for ways to generate more revenue per acre and in order to do that, we decided that we needed to get vertically integrated and begin to process some of the grain that we were growing on the farm. And uh, so that was my big project. I started looking into ways to do that. Um, we actually looked at bakery goods. We looked at popcorn for quite some time. Um, and eventually I settled on distilling as a way to use some of the corn that we were growing to make premium craft spirits for the, uh, for the whiskey industry. Hi, I'm Rob Wallace. I'm master distiller here at Whiskey Acres. I've been here eight years now. Uh, one thing I would tell people about what we're doing here at Whiskey Acres is corn varietals matter to flavor in the final spirit. Um, we've experimented with quite a few varietals. We have our own hybrid now that we've developed and it definitely makes a difference. So what, what we're talking about here is, is um, we'll use heritage varietals like Bloody Butcher. We've used blue popcorn, Oaxacan green corn, glass gym, and Italian flint corn. We have our own hybrid of of a heritage, two heritage varieties. Um, and then just when we're talking about yellow dent, um, we use a lot of that in our, both our bourbon production and also our rye production. There were a few aha moments for us. The first was when we started looking at different varieties, seeing what might work. There were some indications that we had um, that certain characteristics might affect flavor. And so we started working with those and pretty quickly we identified three or four commercial hybrids that once distilled really did prove out to be excellent tasting and we immediately started winning major international awards with those. That was an aha moment for us. It was a proof of concept, right? That some of this, uh, these corn varieties really do make a difference both in flavor and in actual output of the alcohol. The next big aha moment for us and a lot of your, uh, your farming listeners would understand is that the trouble for us with commercial corn varieties is that the life cycle of a commercial corn variety today is probably somewhere in the four to six, four to seven years before that variety is oftentimes replaced by something that's newer and better. The challenge for us was that when you're making a whiskey that now has to age for five years before it's ready, by about the time we'd found that, that particular variety that we were very happy with, it was about to go off the market. So we had to figure out ways to not only do conventional uh, commercial varieties of corn, but we started opening up the playbook to take a look at history and heirloom varieties of corn. And today, that's a part of what we do, is now identify heirloom public varieties of corn and grow those for things like our blue popcorn bourbon, our bloody butcher bourbon, glass gem, blue popcorn was exceptionally popular. And those corns have all won us major international awards. I mean, top three craft bourbons of the year for our blue popcorn, double gold medal winners for us at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition, etc. And so today, that's a big part of what we do. And now we've gone one step further and we're beginning to breed our own crosses of hybrids made from some of those public varieties.